a pretty cool new update. If you're a YouTube streamer and have a modern or really modern graphics card, this video is for you. The YouTube RTMPS beta is now complete and they've finally rolled out full support for HEVC and AV1 streams to the YouTube platform. What does that mean? Well, YouTube streams are going to be a lot higher quality at the same bandwidth if you're someone who creates content with a relatively new graphics card. That's super nerd speak, but let's pull up OBS just so I can explain what exactly is going on. When you're recording, you're probably using something like MP4, H.264, and the same for streaming. That works great. That's powered by your graphics card. If you have a CPU in your PC and you use that for encoding instead, you're using X.264. However, HEVC, otherwise known as H.265, and AV1 are newer codecs that support much higher quality at the same or even less bitrate, AV1 especially so. To use HEVC with a graphics card encoding your video, Video, you'll need a GTX 1050 from NVIDIA or better, or an RX 5000 from AMD or newer, and the Intel Arc and iGPUs should all support this. That's for H.265, HEVC. But for the brand new AV1, if you have a powerful new graphics card that supports this, then you should use this instead. You'll need an RX 7000 AMD GPU or anything in the RTX 40 series and above in order to use AV1, and of course the Intel Arc GPUs, not the iGPUs, built into your CPU support AV1 as well. That's tons of nerd speak. Essentially, H.264, X.264, what you're using now for streams is pretty good. But you can double the quality at the same file size, if not even more, with H.265. And with AV1, you can get even further benefits as long as you have the newer hardware for it. If you're just using your CPU to encode streams, you can still use H.265 and reap the benefits for a very minimal performance performance impact. If I open up my settings in OBS Studio, head across to Stream, make sure that you have YouTube RTMPS selected, as well as the primary or secondary server, and when you do so, you'll be able to stream H.265, H.264, and AV1 to YouTube. If we head across to the Output tab over here, followed by Streaming, you can select some video encoders here. Let me put up a new one just so I can edit this. In the video encoder options here, we have NVENC H.264 and NVENC HEVC. This is the new code that we're allowed to use on YouTube now. And if you were to keep your same bitrate options, say 6,000 kilobits, you should notice a huge increase in quality. The same goes for using QuickSync HVC, which should use your Intel iGPU or Intel graphics card in order to compress it. And of course, if you have an AMD graphics card, you'll see something like AMD HWH265 or HEVC, meaning hardware, which is the same as what we have here for Nvidia. However, you'll notice a few AV1 options. Now, I don't have an RTX 4000 graphics card or newer or AMD RX 7000 graphics card or newer, so I'm not able to use AV1. I can still technically use it with my CPU choosing one of the AV1 options here, but I'd highly, highly recommend against that. You're going to be wasting tons of processing power creating a super hard to encode codec just so you can kind of gain quality. Even with a separate streaming PC, I wouldn't recommend using AV1 with CPU at all, at least for now. However, you can use the H.265 option, or X.265 if you have it, to use your CPU instead. However, if you do see NVIDIA NVENC AV1, QuickSync AV1, or AMD HW AV1, I'd highly recommend you choose those over the HEVC, as you'll get even more quality with even less bandwidth required. Now, assuming you choose H.265 or AV1, there's basically nothing else you need to change. You'll pretty much immediately see a huge quality increase on YouTube, especially when you're using lower bit rates, such as 6,000 kilobits, for example. You could probably push it even lower and keep the same quality you had before, lowering the stress on your internet connection if you're someone with a really slow line. That's a huge advantage of this, less data used, and if you're on a capped connection, it's even better for you. Now, with all of that being said, will you, the viewer, see an increase in quality on YouTube? Well, probably. If you're watching streamers who don't have a 100 megabit line and are completely saturating YouTube servers with some crazy number, you'll definitely see a quality increase. You'll definitely see a quality increase if they stream games like Rust or anything with tons of foliage, leaves, etc. Even Tarkov, you'll know that those games are super blurry and blocky as there's tons of stuff going on. Using HEVC or AV1, you'll notice a huge increase in quality at the same bitrate, with practically no performance impact on the streamer's PC as long as they're using hardware to use it, such as new graphics cards. The same goes for HEVC, but they'll get an 
even further bump if they used AV1. If you're a streamer watching this video and you have one of these options, great. But if you don't already know, you can get even more quality out of YouTube practically for free just by tweaking one of your OBS settings. As you probably know, you can stream at practically any quality to YouTube, 1080p, 2K, 4K. But what you should do is always stream at 2K and above, even if you're on a 1080p monitor. YouTube will essentially take whatever you give it and compress it using the same settings for whatever. Whether it's HEVC, AV1 or H.264, they'll have the same bitrate standards and limits set on their own internal system. So no matter what you send to them, it'll always be crushed down to whatever goes out to the public. If you put in a higher quality source going in, even at the same bitrate, it should look better on the way out. But a way that you can get a huge bump in bitrate on YouTube side for the viewer is to simply crank up your graphics to 2K or 4K. If you have a 1080p monitor and you don't think you're able to do this, yes, you can. It's simply just upscaling what you're sending out to YouTube servers. If you'd like to do so, head across to the video tab in OBS Studio. You'll have your base canvas resolution at 2K or 1080p or whatever you have it set at, for example, 1080. And your output probably only goes up to 1080 as well. We can't crank it higher. You can actually select the text here and type in 2560 by 1440 for 2K or 3840 by 2160 for 4K. By upscaling 1080p to 2K, you'll notice a huge increase in quality if you were to select the higher quality option on YouTube. Even though you're not actually streaming more pixels, you're sending them more pixels, making them compress it at a higher quality, and you're gaining practically free, improved streaming quality for your viewers. The same goes for videos, etc. If you're recording at 2K, for example, you can stream at 3840 by 2160 for a 4K stream, and you can gain even more quality from YouTube. Though that does mean you won't be able to use the super low latency options. Essentially, you can use the ultra low latency at 1080p and lower, the low latency at 1440p and lower, and the normal latency at 4K and lower. So just keep that in mind. For me, I'll be sticking to a 2K stream as I send them a ton of bitrate on my super fast line, so it really doesn't matter for me. That tip does carry over to videos as well. If you edit videos at 1080p, upload them at 2K with a higher bitrate for a huge quality increase. Anyways, prepare for the flashbang. If we pull up YouTube's live stream encoding settings page, you'll see some more information here now covering AV1 and HEVC. These recommendations are the same for those two, though you'll notice a huge increase in quality. If you're streaming 2K, you should stream between 6 and 30 megabits, preferably on the higher end of this for more quality. 4K at 60, 40 megabits, 1080p at 60, 10 megabits. Pretty simple. Stream with H.264, HEVC, or H.265, which we just went through, and AV1 as well. If you'd like higher quality, use these last two. The rest of these is your preference and your setup, but you get the point. You'll find this linked in the description down below should you like to up your streaming quality. As for me, I don't have the ability to use AV1, but I do have the ability to use AGVC, which is what I record in, and I'd recommend you do too if your editing software supports that. So I'll definitely be switching over to that for much higher quality streams at less bitrate. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.